Here I am in our wonderful garden at Malmesbury. Hmm, should we go on a mini beast hunt? Let's go. Ooh, if you look very carefully, there's an itsy bitsy spider crawling up the gate. Oh, spotted a bumblebee. Let's see if we can be quick and sneaky and see what it's like. Oh wow, I just spotted some wonderful snails. They're hidden on the inside of a wall. Shh. Aren't they gorgeous? I won't touch them because I think they're having a little snooze. Now, I've just found this wonderful log. Now, I bet we can find some mini beasts there that are lurking underneath, but we're not gonna touch them because that's their home. So let's see if there's any we can find. Ready? One, two, three. Wah! Oh, whoa! I see a slug. And, well, actually, my eyesight's not so good. I can't see anything else at the moment, but I do see a slug. All right. Oh, I see some, I don't know what those are called. Potato bugs. There's a slug. Oh, there's a couple slugs. Ugh. Cool. And we got some lovely ants and a big old spider. Wow. But we're going to put this back now because that's their home. We'll let them rest. <laughs> Now that we're back inside, I'm going to show you how we can draw some of our mini beasts right here at home. Do you remember that cute little fuzzy little bee I saw on my mini beast hunt? Well, I'm going to draw it today. To do this bee picture, what I did is I printed a picture off the internet of a bee. To do a really good observational draw, you would probably want to see the thing in real life, but I didn't want to break bring a bee home with me. Bees don't live inside my home, they live outside. So to make sure it was nice and safe, I made sure I looked at it nice and carefully outside and then I found a picture on the internet that I could use. Okay, let's get started. Before I get started on my actual picture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to study my bee picture and I'm going to look for the shapes I can find. Hmm, let's see what shapes we can find. Let's see, oh, there's a semicircle, so that's half a circle for the head. And it looks like there's, yes, a circle for the thorax, which is the middle. And it kind of looks like it's a bit of an ovaly circle for its abdomen, the bottom part of the bee. Now the legs are made up of almost three small rectangles. Hmm, how many legs does a bee have? It has six legs. Insects have six legs. So right now I'm just drawing, practicing drawing my shapes on top of my picture. Ooh, the wings look like, hmm, what shape is that? <gasps> Triangles, exactly. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw those exact shapes I just saw in my picture, and I'm gonna draw them on my piece of paper. Now that I found all the shapes of my bee, I'm now gonna draw them out on my piece of paper. Notice where I'm holding the pencil. I'm holding it more in the middle nor near the end of the pencil. That way I'm not pushing too hard on the paper and it allows me to have a bit more freedom in my sketch. So if I do make a mistake, it doesn't take much for me just to quickly rub it out. It might be hard to see um, what I'm drawing because I am drawing very lightly and that's also because when I do my color, the pencil won't show too, uh, through too much. Now I know what you're thinking. This does not look like a bee. Believe me, once you write, uh, draw all your shapes of the bee, it's gonna look pretty strange. However, we're gonna go back and we're gonna add detail and I promise it will start to look more bee-like.
Now that I've finished drawing out all the shapes to my bee, I'm gonna go back over to add detail. That usually means I need to round out edges and I need to take a really close observation of my picture. I need to look at more detail and see where I need to add it to make my bee look more lifelike. Once I'm happy with my outline of the bee, I'm going to add color. Color will help bring texture to the picture to make it look more lifelike. I'm gonna use pastels this time. Um, I don't use them very often, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to use them for a change. And what I'm doing is just finding the colors I need that will match the bee. Once I've chosen the colors, I'm gonna get cracking. I'm using another sheet of paper to protect my hand from smudging any of the colors because oil pastels can tend to be a bit messy. And what I'm doing to kind of emulate the hairs of the bee, I'm actually doing little uh, dashes or little marks with it and I can blend. And the nice thing about oil pastels, you can blend them with your finger and it just makes for a really interesting effect. Ready for the reveal? This is the picture from the internet, and here's my bee. I'm quite proud of that. Now, because I use oil pastels, I know they can be a bit smudgy. So I'm using hairspray to help seal my picture in so that it doesn't smudge quite so easily if I touch it later on. And there you have it. My own close observational drawing of a bumblebee. What can you do at home? Can you do your own bee with the three different body parts and the six legs? Can you do another mini beast? Show me what you can do at home. Maybe you wanna try paint. Maybe you wanna use colored pencils. It's up to you. Anyone can draw as long as you give it a try.